All right, so in this quick tutorial, what we're going to do is look at how to combine hover states with the selected state. So let's first explore how those two states work, and then we'll combine them and see, you know, what the potential conflict is when you're working with them together, and then how you can work and create those uh, states to work together. So I have a slide here, and this, this button here we'll look at. This has a regular hover state. This has a selected state, and then this one has the hover and selected combined. So if we actually... If you're brand new to Storyline, if we select the object here and we come down to the bottom, uh, you're going to see the States tab. And then you can see I created a hover state that's purple. And then um, I'm going to come over to this one here and you can see this one doesn't have a hover state. I removed it, but this one has a selected state that's orange. And then when we look at this one, this is going to have a purple hover state and the orange selected state. So let's go ahead and preview this, talk about what states do, how the pre-built pre states work, and then what you can do. So this, this object here, and it's really any object that you build in Storyline uh, that can have a state, uh, you can just type in hover state, you know, create a hover state. And basically the, these pre-built states remove the need to do uh, your own triggers and programming. Normally you would have to have a trigger that's like change the state of this object from A to B when the mouse is over it. But the hover state, once you create an object and you put a hover state on it, then uh, it just knows that's what it's supposed to do. So the hover state, as I hover my mouse over, you can see it turns purple, and I hover away, and then uh, it goes back. So you have a hover state, it's purple, move away, and it's back. Now the key thing is when the mouse is over it, you're activating the hover state. A selected state's also a pre-built state. Uh, basically, it's kind of like a light switch or a toggle. So you click on it. I'm going to click on it here. It's selected, but then I can click on it again, and it's deselected. So what, what triggers the hover state when I mouse over? Move away. What triggers the selected state? I click on it. It's selected. I click on it again. It's deselected. Now here's the potential dilemma. Move my mouse over. That triggers the hover state click that triggers the selected state. However, to get over the selected state, I'm on top of that object, so that would trigger a hover state. And that's what we have here. This, this button here, this has a hover and selected state. So I mouse over, hover, mouse away, mouse over, hover. Now when I click on it, what's going to happen? I click on it, it's in the selected state, but because the mouse is hovering over, it's also in the hover state. So when I move away, we have selected, hover, selected, hover, selected. Click on it again. I've deselected it. Normal, hover, normal. So now you can see there's a potential conflict. If I create a custom button that has a certain look for the selected state, and it's in the selected state, and then I mouse over it, it's going to go to the hover state, and it might conflict with what I want to do visually. So that's what I did here on this button here. So this button has a hover and a selected state. So um, what's the difference? This one has a hover and selected. This one has a hover and selected. And this one's going to look a little bit different. So uh, if we look at this one here, the selected state is orange. If we look at this one, the selected state is orange as well. So let's go ahead and see what the difference is. Mouse over, click, it's selected, click again, it's deselected. But again, that hover state's active, right? Here, I hover, click, it's in the selected state. What happened? Mouse away. Now you can see there's a slight change in the um, shadow here. That's because I have two states on here. I have the selected and the hover. So why is this one orange and this one isn't? Well, it's kind of a trick. Uh, we'll go ahead and create one from scratch. So let's go ahead and insert a new slide. So we're going to come up to Insert. A slide, we'll just do a basic slide here. And let's just create a really big uh, a button. Um, actually, I'm just going to create an object because if you're brand new to Storyline, you may not know how this works. So I'm going to create a big button here. This is just a shape. We're going to create the states. So I'm going to come down here to states. Go to edit states. I'm going to create a hover state. And then see, I didn't even have to do anything. I'm going to turn this hover, hover state. We'll just make it purple. So no triggers, no programming. We preview this. The hover is active, right? 
So let's go ahead and add a selected state to this too. I'm going to go to edit. I'm going to go ahead and create a new state. Again, selected's pre-built, so I can just do selected state. And then what do we want the selected state? Let's just make it look orange here. And we go ahead and hit done. And now if we preview this, we have that hover state. I click, it's selected, but I still have the hover. I click again, it's deselected. So what if I want the selected state to stay active? Well, there's a trick here. So if I come into this here and I'm inside the shape, so if I want to edit this state, I can go to Edit States, or I can double-click into here, so I'm inside of here. If I put a shape in here, let's just insert an icon. And so when something's selected, I'm going to put an icon in here, we'll just say, um, we'll put a, a thumbs up. Let's see if there's a, a thumbs up here. All right, we like this thumbs up. We'll just go ahead and insert that. So I got a thumbs up here, right? So now this thumbs up is actually, if you think about this, you've got your base shape, the object, which is really this whole slide. It's not just the object. And then I got my thumbs up. The thumbs up kind of floats on top of that. And so if we go here, what should happen is because that thumb object is kind of floating, when I click on it, you can see it's gone into the selected state. So even though I have the hover, that object that I pasted inside the selected state kind of sits on top of everything. So here's what people would normally do. Let's say you want it to, to stay the selected state color. What you could do, let's just come back into selected state. Let's double click and we're going to select this and get rid of this. Uh, what you could do is control X, that gets rid of the shape, and then we're going to do control V, and that's like you pasted the shape now. It's kind of like the thumb, you just pasted it in in into the state. So now what happens is I hover. I click, now I got my selected state, right? But now I don't really have a way to see that I'm hovering. So what you could do is kind of do something to make the hover more evident. So here's a couple of tips. Um, so if you know the hover is going to be covered, uh, what some people do is they may come into the outline, for example, of that shape, and then they may, um, let's just do this. Let's, let's make the outline a little bit thicker. That's one thing you could do. So we're going to do that here, right? So that, that's going to be a little thicker than this shape. So even though it hovers, let's preview this, that thicker border, so you get the hover shape. I click, and you can see you kind of have some semblance of hover. So you can modify that hover state a little bit. If you want something a little bit more subtle, uh, what people generally will do, let's come back into here. We're going to go into the state here. Uh, if you want something a little bit more Subtle, uh, what you could do is let's just go ahead and, oops, let's just make this normal or whatever it was. You could make the shadow a little bit more um, evident, right? So we'll just do the shadow here. So then when I preview this, I've kind of got my hover state, right? And I probably want to modify that a little bit when I click on it. So you get something. So you kind of can modify that. Just, you know, some sort of subtlety so that you can tell that um, it's deselected or, or it's selected and it's still got that hover effect to it. So it's just about modifying the way the hover shape looks. So that's basically it. You've got two pre-built states. So you've got hover and you've got selected. What's, again, nice about those pre-built states is that I don't have to uh, do any triggers. So if I hover hover state, that's always going to be the mouse over. If I have the selected state, it's always like a toggle. I can click on it to select, click on it again to deselect. And then if you combine those, you can see there's some ways you can play around so that you can keep the selected state visible and still have the hover state uh, capability. So uh, it's a good, simple tip. Came from a question in the community. Hopefully this is uh, something you can use.